Hey, I hope you are having a lovely day. Let me know how you are in the comments. Today, we're gonna talk all things UCAT and I'm gonna tell you guys how I managed to get a high UCAT score when I was applying to medical school. If you wanna see more like medical school advice videos, please do subscribe. I'm gonna be posting them every Thursday. Anyway, let's get into the UCAT video. There's a lot of things I wanna talk about in this video and a lot of advice that I wanna give, but before getting into that, I'm gonna do a quick overview of how the UCAT actually works and the types of questions in it. So the UCAT is a two hour exam in total and there's five sections. Each of the five sections is given a different time limit. I hope that makes sense. So the first section is VR, which is verbal reasoning. So in this section, they give you a lot of text passages and you need to answer multiple choice questions. Like if a statement is true, false or can't tell, or you're given questions and you're asked to select the correct statement, like based on the text, stuff like that. Like essentially they're testing that you can read and take in a lot of information and then answer questions on it. For that, you get 44 questions, which is like 11 passages because there's four questions per passage and you get 21 minutes to do that in, which sounds absolutely crazy. And it is, it's quite time pressured, but you can do it. Like it's all about like the strategies and the practice, which I will be talking about later on. So that's the first section. The second section is DM, decision making. So you get 29 questions and you have 31 minutes to answer all of those in this section. I don't really know how to describe this section because there's quite a random array of questions. But yeah, make sure you definitely look at example questions and practice tests and things to know what you're looking for. Um, but it's kind of just testing your logic in this section. So trust yourself to be able to do it basically. The next section is quantitative reasoning, QR. So this is maths and it's at GCSE maths level is what they say. You get 36 questions and you get 24 minutes to do it in. That does sound very time pressured, but I promise some of the questions are easier and you can do them really quickly and then obviously some of them are a bit harder. The fourth section is abstract reasoning, AR. You get 55 questions and 13 minutes to do it. Again, I know that sounds crazy, but basically in abstract reasoning, they give you two patterns and essentially you spot the difference between them usually, or they give you like a sequence of patterns and you have to pick the next one. So it's like visual spotting patterns, spotting differences, things like that. So for the four sections that I've just said, VR, DM, QR and AR, those are all given a score out of 900. I'm not exactly sure how they convert like your raw mark into a score out of 900, but that's basically what's done. People say that if you are applying to medicine, you can most likely pass the UCAT without doing any revision for it. But if you do prepare and revise for it, you will get a high score. And I really strongly believe that if you get a high score in the UCAT, you're really set to get invited to interview. I genuinely think a high UCAT score helps so much. So we're looking to get at least 650 out of 900. And if you get 700, you're all good, basically. That would be my advice and you can definitely do it. Just keep watching. Those were only four sections and I mentioned that there's five. The fifth section is SJT, Situational Judgment. So it's quite a new section. I think they literally added it in the year that I did it. Um, and this one, you get 69 questions and 26 minutes to answer them. Again, don't worry, it's not as bad as it sounds. You're basically given situations and scenarios which you may face as a medical student or as a doctor. And you're expected to select the most appropriate response or like which factor is the most important, stuff like that. So you need to know about good medical practice basically, which I'll talk about in a bit. In that section, you get put into a band with band one being the highest and band four being the lowest. Ideally, you wanna be in band one or two. When I did it, because it was a new section, it didn't carry that much waiting, I don't think. That might have changed now, so it's definitely worth checking how important your uni thinks SJT is. But yeah, the ideal is to do well in every section. 
Now let's talk advice. So the first thing to do in terms of UCAT is to check if the unis that you want to apply to actually need it. 30 medical schools in the UK need it, so it's highly likely that at least one of the med schools that you're applying to will require the UCAT. And then yeah, if your uni does require it, you need to keep on top of applying. So I think applying happens in the summer of year 12, if you are in year 12 and applying in year 13. Um, if not, it happens in the summer before the year you're going to be going to university if that makes sense um so yeah keep on top of it keep checking the official website for updates and make sure you register for the test as soon as you can to get it on a date that you want my first piece of advice is regarding when you should actually book your ucat like when you should actually take the test there's a lot of factors to consider when you're choosing your date. It might not seem like a big deal, but it actually could be. For me personally, I booked my test at the end of my year 12 summer. So at the end of August before school was about to start. That meant I had the whole summer holidays, should I need it, to revise and get a good UCAT score. And then I could go back to school and start focusing on the rest of the medical school application, like personal statement, interview, A-levels, things like that. So I think you can take the test anywhere between July and end of October or something like that. So yeah, when you're choosing your date, here's a few things to consider. Are you going on holiday in the summer? I know it's COVID, but fingers crossed this summer <laughs> gets us somewhere. Anyway, are you going on holiday? If you are, like, do you want to finish it before you leave for holiday? Or is that too early? And do you want to book it with enough time after your holiday to get back into work mode? Another thing to consider is, are you taking the BMAT? So if one of the unis that you want to apply to requires the BMAT, I think that's taken end of October time. So you wanna be thinking about leaving enough gap between your UCAT and your BMAT so that you can revise for the BMAT as well. Those are some of the things to take into consideration when booking your date. So make sure you do really think about it and you choose the date carefully. You want to have enough time to revise, you want to make sure there's no distractions, and then you wanna make sure you have enough time to move on to the next stage of the application process. So that's the date of the test itself. Now on to revising and preparing for the test and making sure you can do as good as possible. Like I said, you don't need to revise technically, but I would seriously highly recommend it. The key tip is just loads of practice questions, like tons and tons and tons. But obviously that's very broad advice and I'm gonna try and be a bit more specific for you guys and give you my top tip per each section. So for VR, verbal reasoning, my top tip that I used that really, really worked for me was spotting key words. The passages that they give you are actually really, really long. Like, not really long, but long for the amount of time that you have to read them. So I would really not recommend reading the whole passage unless you're like a super speedy reading power machine or something like that. Don't bother reading the whole thing. Read the question first and see what the keywords are in the question. And then find those words in the passage and read around them. Honestly, it's a lifesaver. It's what I did for every single question. And like, if you find the keyword, you nine times out of 10 should be able to find the answer. So do that for VR. For DM decision-making, this tip might not make sense if you haven't tried any questions yet, but if you have tried questions or after you've tried some questions, it will make sense. There's a lot of puzzles and like problem solving, almost activities you could say, and I actually used to find them quite fun. But the key thing here is don't bother solving the whole problem if you've already got to the answer. Like I said, it's gonna make sense when you try a question, but keep that in mind, because solving the whole problem if you've already found the answer that you're looking for is a waste of your time and you don't have much time. So we wanna be cutting out any time wasting at all. Now onto VR, which is verbal reasoning. Like I said, the maths questions are gonna be at GCSE maths level. 
Um, hopefully you're okay with GCSE maths. I would literally just advise going over like the key topics and the key concepts and even pulling up an old GCSE maths paper and giving it a go just to get you back into that maths mode. If you're doing A-level maths, it's fine. Like I was doing A-level maths, so I was practicing questions anyway. And yeah, that was all good. But if you're not, it will be helpful to do a GCSE maths paper. And I would highly recommend focusing on percentages because in the UCAT they bring a lot of percentages into every other topic if that makes sense so make sure you know how those work basically now the final like section that's marked out of 900 is abstract reasoning AR this was my personal least favorite section it's like finding patterns and differences between sets of completely random abstract shapes and I could not do it for the life of me, I don't think. <laughs> what I did do that helped is look up videos on YouTube because there's a lot of videos from different people that help with like medicine applications and stuff and they talk you through all the different kinds of patterns that you could spot. And that actually gives you a really good idea of what to look for when you're looking. Because I remember I used to look at the patterns and be like, I don't even know what I'm looking at, I don't know what I'm looking for. So yeah, those videos and maybe even a blog post, like they're really helpful. They tell you what kind of patterns you could be given. So then you have some sort of idea of what you're looking for. And like following on from knowing that, you literally just have to practice them and you'll get good at spotting the patterns. Now for the final section, the situational judgment section, which is in four bands, I would highly, highly recommend reading GMC's Good Medical Practice practice that will contain like all the knowledge you need to know to be able to make a well-informed answer in that section so make sure you read that like if you're applying to medicine you're going to need to read that anyway so definitely read it for the SJTs they were my little piece of advice for each section the next piece of advice is really obvious but the most important thing ever and that is to do practice questions I genuinely think that doing loads and loads of practice questions in the lead up to my exam were the reason that I performed so well because I was in that mindset, I was banging out so many questions, I knew what the format was inside and out and yeah that just had me in the right mindset for the exam and I was able to go in and just do it. Places you can get practice questions, so you can get actual mocks from the official UCAT website, you literally just need to type in like UCAT practice tests and you'll get the whole mock. The site that saved my life, this isn't promotion or anything, like I genuinely just used this site and it was great, it was Medify. I think it's still called. You do have to pay for it, but if you can, I would recommend buying like a bundle. Like you can buy it for a week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever's gonna work for you. But I did every single question on that site for the time that I bought it. And I did all the mocks and it helped so, so much. So I really recommend doing that. They also have like tutorials for each section and each kind of question you can get. So it's just a great learning and revision tool that I would highly recommend. Or like just find any website with practice questions that works for you and practice them. Next tip is have a revision schedule. So I feel like you're told this for every exam and it's equally as important for the UCAT. The UCAT is quite different, so it's about finding a schedule that's gonna work for you. So for me, I had about 15 or 16 days before the UCAT to really prepare because I think I'd been on holiday or been doing something and then I had like two weeks and then it was my UCAT. So what I decided to do was an intense, two weeks of UCAT. I did all the practice questions, I did all the mini mocks, I did all the mocks, and then I went in and I did the exam. And that worked for me, but you know what's gonna work for you. If you need to break it down more and take it more slowly and revise over the whole course of the summer, that's completely fine. Just make a schedule, that works for you and stick to it, like get those practice questions done. So that's all the advice I can give about doing well on the UCAT, about being ready for it. The final thing I need to say is on the day, 
definitely be calm. I know it's something completely different to any exams you've taken before and it is nerve wracking, like it was nerve wracking, but don't kill all your hard work by stressing out on the day because at the end of the day, you've been practicing questions on your computer, you're gonna go and take the test on the same computer in exactly the same way. It's something you've done hundreds of times already is answer those questions. So why does it make it any different on the day? Try and remember that, try not to stress, stay calm and remember to believe in yourself because if you've done the work and put the preparation in, you're gonna do so well. Okay, so that is pretty much the end of my UCAT advice video. Please don't hesitate to message me if you have any questions at all about the UCAT or about like medicine applications. And remember to subscribe if you wanna see more medical school and uni advice videos and also positivity and lifestyle videos. As always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed.